How's it going guys? My name is Nathan Duck and I'm going to show you how to use the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library in Blender. This is a bit of a part two of the part one we posted a couple days ago where I showed you how to use materials in Blender. Today I'm going to show you how to use lights and models in Blender from the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library. First thing we need to do is go to grayscalegorillaplus.com and check out their library. And if you are a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you get access to thousands of models, materials, and lights that you can use inside of Blender. Or if you wanna follow along for free, you can check out their free assets right here. Tons of nice materials and models and lights that you can use to follow along in this video. So go ahead and download the assets that you wanna use in your scene because this video is more dedicated to lights. Go ahead and check out some of their light assets right here with the HDRIs and their gobos, really cool stuff. I'm going to start out by grabbing the modern industrial HDRI here and we're going to throw that into the scene now. Now along with this video you are going to get access to this project file right here. It's going to have no lighting in it so we can go ahead and populate it with lights here today. So the first thing I want to do is add in my HDRIs. Now I'm going to hit zero just so I can check out my camera view and I'm going to go to the cycles view by clicking up here in the top right. So the way you import HDRIs is you go over here to this red little earth sign, click on the little yellow dot and click on environment texture which is going to allow you to import those. Now just go ahead and click the open button and grab your HDRI. So here it is. I'm going to go ahead and double click on my HDRI and he is going to go into our scene in nice and all its glory. I'm going to pop up the strength right over here to about a three just so we can kind of see everything. So now that we can see everything, I'm going to take a second and show you how to import models into this project. So I'm gonna go over here. These are the models that are currently populating over here using geometry nodes. So what I wanna do is go here in the outliner and click on collection just so we know where this model is going to import. Now in the free assets, you're gonna see this Tetra 08. I downloaded that one, threw it into my files, and now I'm gonna go ahead and import that in Blender. So I'm gonna go here to file, import, and click on the FBX. And here he is. I'm just gonna go ahead and double click him. And then you can't really see him. I'm gonna hit G and you can see this little orange dot. That means he's there. He's just very small. So I'm gonna hit S and scale him up. And I'm using G just to move around. And you can hit the period key just to center him out like that. Now that he's here, we're gonna add a material to it. But I wanna point out with these Grayscale Gorilla Plus models, they are already unwrapped for you. You don't need to do anything and you can check it out in the UV editing. Perfect and unwrapped for you. Now I'm looking at it through cycles. If you wanna just use the material preview, you can click on this button here and let's go ahead and hit file, import, Grayscale Gorilla Plus material. Now, if you don't see this, you're going to need the add-on that comes with your Grayscale Gorilla Plus account. Now, if you wanna go ahead and check out the video that I made showing how to import materials, that will add all the context you need with using materials from Grayscale Gorilla Plus in Blender. But I'm gonna go ahead and skip over that, go ahead and check out that video, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click on add the Grayscale Gorilla material. And I'm gonna import the clay dough material. And then right here, you can see clay dough blue zero two. And then if you click right here, hit the drop down, you'll see there he is. If you wanna learn how to tile or change the color, I know I sound like a broken record, but there's a really cool video all about that that we already posted. You can check that out. So hopefully that's the last time I mention it. Now that he is ready to go, I'm gonna hit M, which allows you to move a model into a collection. And I'm gonna use the spheres collection. If you notice right over here, there he is, which he's just far too big. And so what you can do is hit tab, I'm gonna hit A to make sure all the faces are selected, hit S and scale it down so that it fits right that and go, okay. So now he, now the model is textured and added and just a very simple process just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is go back to the cycles view and let's go ahead and add some more lights to this scene. So one thing I wanna show you guys is how to import a gobo and so the way I like to do it is using the spotlight and we're just gonna go here to the flat view and I'm gonna hit G to move them up. I'm gonna hit S to scale it down a little bit. They're a little bit big on import and then use G kind of middle click and get him pointed at the scene however you want. Now this light was accidentally added to the collection where, with all the spheres. So I'm gonna hit M and click on just regular collection so he's by himself. I'm gonna hit R twice and point it where I want it to be pointed. So there we go. And then I'm gonna go back by hitting zero. We're gonna to go to the cycles view and check it out. 
So what I'm gonna do is go here to the shading tab so we can kind of add all of our gobos here and we can use this small window over here as our preview. So I'm gonna hit the period key right up here in the outliner so we can see our spotlight or you can just click him manually in the viewport. And right here you'll see use nodes. This is how you are allowed to add the gobo. So I'll click use nodes, this will pull up and then I'm going to hit Control T, which is going to give us a couple nodes. If that didn't work for you, you need to go to your preferences in the add-ons and get the node wrangler. If you type in node in the search, click on node wrangler and it will work. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and open up where my gobo is. So right here is where I saved all the image sequences for my gobo. Now this is a animated gobo, but you can just use a single image and it doesn't have to be animated. And Grayscale Gorilla Plus has a really awesome library of super cool animated gobos. So, so what you can do is just click on this guy and click on open image. Now Blender is not gonna recognize that it is an image sequence. So you'll go ahead and say, use image sequence, it has 180 frames, turn on cyclic and auto refresh, so it just keeps going and going, and it's ready. So what I'm gonna do here in the light settings is just give it a power of 1,000, and that's gonna kind of give it a good gauge, and then right here on the emission strength, you're gonna have more of a sensitive way to open it up, and we'll give it maybe like 400 or so, and now you can see the gobo right here in the scene. So if we go, say, turn him off and get a bigger view, just so we can kind of see more clearly what's happening. Here is our light. You can see these beautiful gobo artifacts um, showing up with shadow and all that. And let me show you a really cool way to control your gobo even farther than you already do. So I'm gonna highlight these two guys and hit G. We're gonna get a color ramp and add in our color ramp. Now you'll remember, if we look at the gobo, it's very soft. There aren't very hard edges, very soft edges within the detail of the image. So what if you wanna actually control that? Well, this color ramp has a nice feature called constant, which now gives you a hard edge rather than a soft edge. And what that allows you to do is control the softness yourself. So play with how much shadow you want in your scene. Again, click on the spotlight, click on the light settings here, and you can play with radius, and that is going to allow you to choose the softness, which also helps you control the shadows that the objects it's hitting are doing. So you have full control in that sense, and it's really cool. And then you can go ahead and play with the strength of your light to however you want it to be, and you can also move your light around. Now I'm gonna click over here and go to my layout and go to my camera view. I wanna add an area light that's kinda of hitting right here just to fill out a few more things, and this is a really good opportunity for the area light maps. So what we're gonna do is hit Shift A, go to Lights and add an area light, and this is just a regular default area light. I'm using G to move it up, and then hitting R twice to move it around, and you can hit S to scale it up like that. Now what you can do is go back to shading, and we're gonna add in that area light map. So we're gonna click Use Nodes, now make sure, I'm hitting period, make sure that area light is selected, and we're gonna hit Control T and open up to wherever you saved your area light map. Here is my area light map that I saved. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the HDR file and it is going to, Blender is going to map it for you already the way you're gonna want it to be. And of course in cinema, they allow you to kind of preview what's going on. Blender doesn't allow that just yet. Maybe there's an add on that'll help you um, or maybe there is a way, I don't know. Um, but if you wanna test, you can add like a mirror object in front, but I can tell you, it's mapped perfectly, Blender sets that up for you. And then all you have to do now is just play with the strength of your emission node. And I noticed it is accidentally added into everything, so I'm gonna hit M, click on Scene Collection for that area light. So now you can play with the strength of that light. You can kind of see it, the light showing up right here. So if you like this kind of Google-esque lighting, you can, or you can just leave it out by hitting zero, having a more contrasted light, and then here in your HDRI, maybe give it a strength of 1.5, so you can add more contrast and then maybe add that area light in. Really, it's up to you and your creativity. Um, I'm just kind of kit bashing at this point. Um, so I'm gonna make my area light a strength of 300 just to leave it at that. It's a bit messy, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and say, get my spotlight and bring the strength down to maybe 200, something like that, just to soften it out. And then maybe bring that radius up to make it look a little bit softer. And you can have fun with all of your lights. 
And there you go. That is how you use your lights and your models inside of Blender using Grayscale Gorilla Plus. If you want to check out more about Grayscale Gorilla Plus, you can check that out linked in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you learned some stuff and I'll see you in the next one.